Oh, I, I apologize. I tend to not be myself when I get hungry. Maybe I should order some pizza. Welcome to yet another episode of Round the Clock Frights, and today we'll be talking about Five Nights at Freddy's, or FNAF, and man, it's finally here because it felt like it took Hollywood forever to make this movie. Longer than it took Richard Linklater to make Boyhood. <laughs> but it's finally here. So, was I a fan of Freddy Fazbear's cinematic debut? Mmm, not really. <laughs> I have a lot of questions. Number one, how dare you? Okay, so my history with Five Nights at Freddy's, I remember playing the game back when I was a freshman in college. Yeah, I am unfortunately that ancient. Um, I played this game when I was in college, but you know, I heard about it. It was this little indie horror game that was making waves and I played it for maybe an hour or so and it was moderately entertaining. You know, I got some thrills out of it. It was fun and I didn't really think anything of it. But then it exploded, it became a cultural phenomenon, and I just have to say, it's kind of cool that kids have made this franchise as popular as it is. It honestly reminds me of when I was a kid, and I latched onto horror franchises that weren't necessarily made for me, because, let's be honest, Five Nights at Freddy's wasn't made with kids in mind. I mean, it's about killer animatronics shoving human beings inside <laughs> these dangerous suits. Not, as, not exactly kid-friendly material, but you know, when I was a kid, I looked up to horror villains like Jason Voorhees and Freddy Krueger. I even had a Friday the 13th lunchbox that I brought to elementary school. My teachers weren't necessarily happy with me, but yeah. Uh, this generation took a little indie horror game and turned it into a cultural phenomenon, which is honestly pretty cool. So, I have nothing against Five Nights at Freddy's, I'm just not overly familiar with it, and because of that, I don't think I was the right audience for this movie. And you know, I came into this movie as a die-hard horror fan. I have seen hundreds upon hundreds of horror films, and w with a movie like this, I have certain expectations. I want to go and see killer animatronics wreaking havoc. I want to see them murdering people left and right. I want to see creative death sequences. So that's what I was looking for in this movie, and to be honest, it didn't necessarily deliver, except for one awesome sequence, which we'll talk about here in a little bit, but it it's not that it wasn't gory enough. I don't need this film to be an all-out splatterfest. I don't need it to be the next Saw movie. I don't need it to be like an Eli Roth film, because I understand the need for a PG-13 rating. There's that target demographic. I'm sure Blumhouse knew that kids would want to see this movie, so they wanted to make it a PG-13. I understand. And honestly, some of the kills on display here are actually pretty impressive, including- oh man. So this was hinted at in the trailer, but there's a scene where a character is slowly walking towards the Freddy animatronic, and she looks inside the animatronic head, and a hand pops out, and what happens next is genuinely gruesome and kind of amazing, and I'm shocked that they were able to get, get away with it because, you know, the MPAA is very, very strict when it comes to on-screen violence, but it was a pretty awesome death scene, I'm not gonna lie. We knew that the visibility from the fan base was super high. Every department on this movie played such a crucial and important role. And yeah, you can do a movie about killer robots and still water it down to a PG-13. You can have sequences of robots killing people, they just, they don't have to be over the top and disgusting, but, you know, that aspect of the film felt very, very minimal, and instead, I had to endure long, meandering sequences of PETA from Hunger Games trying to gain custody of his little sister. There's even some scenes where they try to make the robots seem very friendly. Like, there are sequences where the little girl is hanging out with them. There's a fun montage where they're building a fort inside the pizzeria. And I was thinking to myself, aren't these things supposed to be intimidating and threatening? This is coming across as kind of lighthearted and fluffy. Not exactly what I'd expect from a Five Nights at Freddy's movie, but 
I'm sure there was a part of them that wanted to make these animatronics kind of appealing to little kids because little kids are big fans of this series, so I don't know. It was kind of strange. I will work and you will sleep. I understand. Just keep your eyes on the monitor. Welcome to Freddy Fazbear's, where fantasy and fun come to life. Okay. But, uh, let's talk about the general plot of this movie, and to this movie's credit, it does attempt to give its characters some depth. Uh, Josh Hutcherson, who you may remember from such nostalgic films as, as a Bridge to Terabithia and The Polar Express, I believe. I believe he played the hero boy in that movie. But he plays this down on his like, young man who is looking after his little sister. Their parents have died, and he is haunted by the fact that his little brother was kidnapped at a very young age, so he does this thing where he is attempting to remember the face of the man who kidnapped his little brother. You know, he literally goes inside his dreams and he's trying to get clues about, you know, his brother's kidnapping. He's trying to remember what exactly happened that day. So yeah, there's some depth there. But anyway, uh, he's desperate for a job and he goes to Matthew Lillard who, oh, Matthew Lillard is amazing in this movie. He's definitely a highlight for me because he is just having so much fun in this role. But anyway, he gets a job as the security guard at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, which is no longer in business, but it was a popular kid spot in the 80s. Which, by the way, if I remember correctly, in the first Five Nights at Freddy's game, wasn't the pizzeria actually open for business? It wasn't closed down? But anyway, that's beside the point. And of course, you can obviously guess what happens next. The animatronics come to life and you know, they start wandering about on their own, and Josh Hutcherson's character, you know, gets in danger, and we learn, you know, the backstory of this place and what happened. It turns out there was a serial... It turns out it was found by this serial killer who was secretly killing off kids left and right, and he made this place because he wanted to hide up his criminal activities. And his little sister gets involved, you know, she becomes friends with the animatronics, as mentioned earlier, and of course she gets in danger at one point, and he has to figure out how to rescue her, and there's also this young female cop, played by an actress, who bore a resemblance to Jennifer Lawrence. There were times I thought I was looking at Jennifer Lawrence, I thought she looked a lot like her. <laughs> but anyway guys, that's the general plot of this movie, and I just have to say, this movie takes itself way too god dang seriously. You know, as mentioned, you know, Josh Hutcherson is trying to, you know, unravel the mystery of what happened to his little brother, and... Uh, by the way, what's this movie's beef with the state of Nebraska? I... I grew up in Nebraska. I lived there until I was a senior in high school, and they make jokes about Nebraska in this movie. There's a scene where he's talking to Jennifer Lawrence cop, and she's like, So, uh, what do you do for fun around here? And he says something like, I don't know, visit Nebraska? Tee hee! <laughs> and a slap in the face to, you know, everyone from Nebraska. So, thanks for that, Five Nights at Freddy's. He also has a poster of Nebraska on his ceiling, you know, which he looks at when he's attempting to fall asleep, because it's a poster of the woods where his lore brother was kidnapped, and he enters his dreams through this poster, this movie has a thing against Nebraska, like, what the heck? <laughs> but, to be honest, the writing in this movie isn't always the greatest. There's some really broad characterizations in this movie. There's this ant character who is so overbearing, and she reminds me of the woman from uh, the movie Casper. You know, that blonde, bitchy woman who spends the entire movie trying to locate, you know, some hidden treasure. That's who she reminded me of. She's very over the top and, you know, she's very condescending and mean and <laughs> she was such a cartoon character. She was the typical evil aunt. And there's some really glaring plot holes which I can't really get into because then I'd be entering Spoilersville. But I, but I will mention one that bugged me. It, it actually bugged me a lot. So it, it turns out there's a character who has a connection with Josh Hutcherson. You know, Josh Hutcherson is trying to, you know, find out who kidnapped his little brother, and that took place in Nebraska, but I don't think this movie takes place in Nebraska. 
I, I'm not entirely sure where it takes place at. I even looked online and I couldn't find anything, but I'm pretty sure it was an entirely different state. And it just happens that this person lives in the same area as Josh Hutcherson. Like, did they follow him all the way from Nebraska? Or is it just a coincidence that they seem to be living in the same area? And they just happen to cross paths with, with one another? That was a pretty, pretty big coincidence. Um, very, very weird. <laughs> Also, the motivations of the robots, the motivations were kind of muddled. Like, in the original video game, the premise was very simple. You know, you play a security guard, and the robots are after you because they think that you're an animatronic out of costume, which, by the way, would that really be against, would that really be against the rules of a pizzeria for the animatronics to be out of costume? That just seems like it'd be a malfunction. Is that really a major rule at Freddy Fazbear's? Anyway. Uh, simple premise, that's what made the game so effective. I kind of... Yeah, I, I heard about the mythology, that they kept adding things to the Freddy Fazbear, you know, mythology, and, you know, it, it involves, like, the souls of kidnapped kids, you know, who were murdered by the serial killer, and I just quickly lost interest. It, it sounded very convoluted, and I just honestly didn't care. In this movie, yeah, the same problem arises. But yeah, I didn't always understand, you know, what the robots were after, what they were trying to gain. It, it was a little bit muddled for me. Uh, there were two movies that came out recently. Uh, they've been labeled as Five Nights at Freddy's ripoffs. But to be honest, I thought they handled this premise a lot better. Uh, the bana the uh, Banana Splits movie, which came out in 2019, it was over the top and gruesome, but it didn't take itself seriously. It was campy, and I had a relatively good time with it. It also had some very creative death scenes, and it knew exactly what to do with the idea of psychotic animatronics Ricky Havoc. It, it knew how to handle a premise like that. Willy's Wonderland starring the impeccable Nicolas Cage. I didn't necessarily like that movie, but I don't know, it felt like it had some energy to it. This movie felt dull, lifeless, and boring. There are many times where I was just staring at the screen feeling so bored. There were too many scenes of people just like solemnly talking to each other and the pacing was very, very slow at times. The director of this movie, I believe her name is Emma Tommy or Tammy, she did a commendable job. This movie is very atmospheric and it has some nice creepy shots. The pizzeria itself isn't too over the top. You know, it's it looks like a legitimate abandoned building. It doesn't look like a Hollywood location. So this movie was decently made. It was just very, very slow at times, and, you know, I've been reading some reviews online. It, it, the mainstream critics are definitely not liking this movie. I think it has like a 25% on Right Tomatoes, but the fan base seems to love it. And, you know what? I grew up with the Pokemon movies, and I love the Pokemon movies. The critics despised the Pokemon movies. Like, Pokemon the first movie with Mewtwo? That movie rocked my world. I, I loved those movies as a kid, because I was a tremendous Pokemon fan. Fans of the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise will probably get exactly what they were looking for. It just wasn't necessarily for me. I was expecting a bit more. I wanted more kill sequences. I wanted more carnage. Again, didn't have to be too gory or gruesome. Just, you know, there was one scene where the robots run amok and start killing people. And that was pretty much it. And obviously there's going to be some sequels. Um, I read that they have three sequels in the making. They're all going to be made by Blumhouse. Oh, Blumhouse, what are you doing to me this year? You didn't impress me with The Exorcist Believer, and you definitely didn't impress me with this film either. Um, you know, even last year you had the putrid Halloween Ends, which I still feel traumatized by. But yeah, this is yet another example of Blumhouse getting their hands on a popular horror franchise and failing to deliver, at least for me. The fan, the fan base will probably enjoy it, but for a casual horror fan, check out the Banana Splits movie or Willy's, Willy's Wonderland if you're hungry for a campy film about killer animatronics. Those films will probably whet your appetite. Anyway guys, those are my thoughts on the Five Nights at Freddy's movie. I'm glad they finally got it out. Oh, and by the way, the animatronics in this movie are astounding. They were made by the Jim Henson Company, the legendary Jim Henson Company, and they looked fantastic. And I could tell... The, you know, the animatronics were actually there. They were actually present on camera throughout the majority of the movie. I didn't detect any obvious CGI, although I think that flying cupcake 
was a digital creation, at least in certain areas, but I'm not entirely sure. But the practical effects in this movie are very well done. So if you're a fan of Five Nights at Freddy's, you know, run to your local movie theater or watch it on Peacock. You know, Peacock, you know, has it readily available for you. So watch it at home if you wish. Guys, thank you so much for joining me in my discussion of Five Nights at Freddy's. And it's time to get excited, guys. It's the day before Halloween. I am just so, so excited that the best time of the year has finally arrived. Uh, we actually just bought a ton of candy. There is a box full of candy behind my television set right now. I hope we get a lot. I hope we get a lot of trick or treaters this year. Otherwise, we're gonna have enough candy to last us the next several years. It's gonna be <laughs> we're gonna be well fed. But anyway, guys, if you like what you saw here, please subscribe to my channel, Round the Clock Frights, for more horrific content. Have a very safe and happy Halloween, boils and ghouls. I hope you have yourselves a good time. And yeah, I'm gonna order some pizza because that's one thing this movie did. It made me hungry for pizza, so I'm gonna get to it. I'm not sponsored by anyone, I just, I have a craving for pizza right now. Anyway guys, have fun.